Hello and welcome to Scandinavian Design 101. Uh, recently I received some questions on Instagram about bra bohag, literally translated to fine household uh, goods. And if you're interested in Swedish furniture design, you've probably seen this logo on Swedish mid-century pieces, uh, even though they are produced by several different manufacturers. Whether it's an Öresund bookshelf by Börje Mogensson, a TV chair by Alf Svensson or a teak sideboard by Nils Jonsson, they might all have a bra bohag sticker underneath. In fact, as you will soon discover, some of the most iconic pieces in Swedish design history were sold by bra bohag. Strangely, there is very little information available in English, uh, which is why I'm doing this video. And I will also show you a lot of wonderful pictures uh, found in Bra Bohag catalogs. And uh, for example, these, uh, we have a catalog from the 1950s, another catalog from the 60s and one from the 70s. Um, but first, uh, let's start by saying a few words about the manufacturer Dux. Nowadays best known for their beds, but also for uh, their long-time collaboration with Bruno Mattsson. The company was founded in 1926 by the industrialist Efraim Jung, who made a fortune producing chocolate. He started several companies in the 20s and came up with the idea of producing comfortable mattresses after visiting Chicago. The bed at the hotel was extremely comfortable and the airframe couldn't resist cutting it open with a penknife to find out what was inside. It turned out that instead of just like horse hair or other filling, the mattress was constructed from coil springs. After returning to Sweden, he started experimenting with a similar mattress and soon Airframe launched his first model under the brand Dux. The beds were indeed a huge success, but Airframe also wanted to produce upholstered furniture constructed from the same springs. Um, as owner of the, uh, the carpentry Cox, he was able to produce wooden frames and soon several sofas and easy chairs were launched. All these different companies were probably a bit confusing for the customers and in 1947 Airframe decided to collect them all in a single company named Jung's Industrier, Jung's Industries. Um, it was Airframe's son Erik who finally established Jung's Industrier and Dux as one of Sweden's most prominent furniture manufacturers, commissioning architects to design modern furniture and made to be comfortable, ergonomically fulfilled, and yeah, you know. In the late 60s, a close collaboration was initiated with Bruno Mattsson, starting with a Jetson swivel chair, and in the following years, several classic molds were produced, and they were all known for their timeless design and superior quality. But uh, this video is supposed to be about uh, Bra Bohag. Why am I talking about Dux? Well, to sort things out, we must first establish what was Bra Bohag actually. And the answer is that it was founded in 1956 as a sales organization promoting furniture and interior design from a handful of Sweden's most important manufacturers. In the 1956 catalog, see it here. Um, the following companies were listed as members. Jungs Industrier, Karl Andersson och Söner, Bergbons, Eilas, Hagafors Stolfabrik, Mönlycke Weberi, Tabergs Yllefabrik, Tingströms and Hugo Troeds. Sön, Nybrofabriken Frösäcke and Svenska Möbelfabrikerna in Bodafors joined the collaboration. And in the 1956 catalog, the idea behind Bra Bohag was explained like this. Bra Bohag is a program embraced by nine leading home interior companies. A unified aesthetic uh, with a quality guaranteed. 
Nowadays, it's often difficult to find sofas, tables and sh- cabinets that fit together in a home. Bra Bohag want to make it easier for you to create a home interior where these different parts harmonize with each other. Yeah, then we can understand what, what they wanted to achieve at least. And let's say a few words about the participating companies. Uh, you already know about Jung's Industrier, but it's worth noticing that Dux was a brand included in Jung's Industrier in 1956, just like, for example, the Studio line. Um, it's quite famous for uh, not least um, a range of easy shares. And then we have Carl Andersson, a family-owned company founded in the late 19th century as a small carpentry. They are known for their wooden furniture by in-house designers, as well as famous names like Carl Malmsten and Börje Mogensen. And Mogensen's Öresund range is probably their best-known product. And next is the lighting company Bergbooms, actually also founded by Ephraim Jung. Originally, the company produced ice cream machines and electric hand mixers, but soon focus shifted to lamps. And the company collaborated with a long range of famous designers, several of them international designers, and best known is probably Greta Magnusson Grossman and her grasshopper lamp. And next up is the nowadays quite forgotten manufacturer Eilas, a producer of mainly sofas and daybeds. And nothing really remarkable, and it's no surprise none of their products became a classic. And then we have Haga for Stolfabrik, one of the first furniture manufacturers ever founded in Sweden, and it was founded already in 1863. And they were mainly a producer of wooden chairs, at first traditional models inspired by Windsor furniture, but later it was modernist looking chairs, nowadays attractive on the second hand market. Two textile manufacturers were also a part of Bra Bohag. It was Mölnlycke Weberi and Tabergs Ullefabrik, and these companies produced curtains, tablecloths and other textiles perfect as a complement to the modernist furniture. And next up is E. Tingströms, who mainly produced wooden tables, bedside tables and other similar products. Best known are probably the pieces designed by the duo Sven Engström and Gunnar Myrstrand. And next we have Hugo Troeds, famous not least for the many simplistic teak sideboards by the designer Nils Jonsson. I think you've seen them on, the, on, on auction for example. And Nybrofabriken Fröseke produced uh, mirrors and smaller furniture like dressing tables and cabinet of drawers. And their products are often relatively anonymous and uh, little is known about who designed them. And finally, we have the large manufacturer Svenska Möbelfabrikerna in Bodafors, at the time one of the largest furniture manufacturers in whole Scandinavia. Famous architects like Axel Eina Hjort, Axel Larsson and Bertil Fridhagen all used to work for the company and over the years the company produced an almost unbelievably big amount of different models. The golden age of Bra Bohag was in the late 50s and early 60s when some of the best Swedish brands and furniture pieces were included in the catalogue. Furniture stores all around the country had separate Bra Bohag exhibitions often arranged by famous people as a marketing stunt. The collaboration also made it possible to include large colored ads in the leading newspapers and interior magazines, promoting the furniture and the different manufacturers. But this successful era was quite brief. In 1962, Brabo Hag opened a permanent showroom of their own, and this annoyed several furniture stores who didn't like this competition. At the same time, the Swedish furniture industry was struggling financially, not least due to uh, the low-cost furniture offered by IKEA. Six manufacturers decided to leave Bra Bohag later this year, and suddenly only Jungs Industrier, Bodafors, Eilas, Tingströms, Hugo Troeds remained. 
And finally, in 1966, the remaining companies fused into a single company, Bra Bohag AB, Bra Bohag Incorporated, uh, with Erik Jung as director. Even though so many companies had left the collaboration, the new Bra Bohag company became the largest furniture manufacturers in Scandinavia, with factories not, not just in Sweden, but also Denmark, Germany and France. But after only a short while, Bra Bohag returned to be a sales organization rather than a manufacturer, and over the following years the participating companies changed. They kept on publishing catalogs until 1991, but I won't focus on this period at all. Frankly, most of the pieces in the catalogs, on these late catalogs, either are old classics or rather boring furniture not worth talking about. And one example is perhaps some of the quite nice lamps by Atelier Lyktan, seen here next to some totally crazy looking uh, Duke's beds. But this was all I had to say about Bra Bohag. Um, I will now show you a lot of these amazing interiors found in the Bra Bohag catalogs. Thank you for watching. Thank you.